about this project from the very first days when I entered the, the Curic team and really at, at first sight I thought it was a really fascinating journey. I have two daughters, they're really young and I want them to grow up in a world that's sustainable, that's safe for them and that's beautiful also. The traditional model that we've grown accustomed to is that you produce something, we consume something, and then there is waste that is associated with that process. But what if we could close that loop so that the waste is actually an input into the production? That's what a circular economy is really all about. We want to ensure that throughout the value chain, uh, we minimize our environmental impact as much as possible. And this starts in the coffee fields in certain countries up to the end of life of our products, being the, the brewers or the K-cup pods. They were not able to be recycled in their uh, previous format because they were made of plastic number seven, which is a multi-layered plastic that is, that is not widely accepted. So we wanted to find a new material. We decided to have some aggressive goals around uh, 2020 that would hit uh, our, uh, our aspiration of, uh, of brewing a better world. Uh, by 2020, obviously, we wanted to have full recyclability across our whole network. In, in North America. The idea was to find the right solution to ensure that the K-Cup pods could be recyclable and recycled for real. For us, it was really important to have this proactive approach uh, to, to get the insight from the experts because you have to realize that at one point we are coffee experts. We were not recycling experts when we embarked on this journey. We really needed to, to find uh, knowledgeable people to give us advice, to provide us the right information. And for us, it was um, meeting with the key stakeholders and going and sit down with the facilities themselves was a way to ensure that it would be recycled properly. Very rarely does the recycling industry get to work with these companies to help them incorporate recycling decisions in the design and manufacturing. It should be a given that of course you engage your stakeholders in finding solutions, but I actually think that the approach that Keurig is using in talking to all these stakeholders who are involved in the whole process is very rare. Recycling facilities across Canada are all very different. What a lot of people don't know about recycling facilities is that they're run by really sophisticated equipment that are basically like computers. And like computers and smartphones, we need to be upgrading them every few years. And so a lot of facilities, unless they keep up with that investment, they may not be able to recycle and recover a product like the K-Cup. I think that's why Keurig's approach of actually working closely with stakeholders all across the country makes a lot of sense. There were many challenges encountered and many questions that we needed to ask ourselves. Compostable or recyclable one, uh, we went for recyclable because the solution was much more available to the Canadian population. The biggest item that was a non-compromise is the quality of the coffee. The experience people have when they drink their coffee is maintained. And then we had to find the answer to which material we would choose. So uh, after the analysis of all the plastics, uh, we came up with polypropylene because it was the right solution. It was the one that best met these criteria. We developed a really unique and innovative testing methodology uh, based on RFID technology to make sure that we knew how the pods would react and behave uh, when arriving at recycling facilities. We've came out with great results so far. Approximately 90% of the, the, the empty cups that we tested usually make it to the container line, which is a great result. It actually proves that the pod end up on the right place and have a real potential to be recycled and use it for the, the creation of new goods. They are a risk. They, they, there is a lot of investment needed. We've made a lot of important investment to uh, transition all of our production lines here in Montreal in the plant uh, to transition them uh, to the recyclable format because since it's a new material, all the machines need to be recalibrated and transitioned to, to produce these new, uh, new K-Cup pods. Right now we're focusing on the pod but uh, uh, the continuum will not stop. Uh, we're, 
we're an innovator and that's what we want to, uh, to, to continue to do in the future. So they're demonstrating corporate social responsibility. It's time for consumers to also demonstrate our personal social responsibility. So while there's a recyclable product that's available in the market, we have to actually recycle it. When a large company like Keurig that's dominant in their industry makes a bold move in a particular direction, it sends ripple effects throughout the market. It sends a strong signal of where things are going. And I think what it really does is help us move towards a more circular economy. Uh, the journey to, to recyclability uh, with Keurig has been really fascinating and exciting and it's, it's not ending yet. <laughs>